ಪುಷ್ಟಿರ್ಮಿಲಸ್ಮೈಗುರವೆ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ವಾಪಿತೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂಕಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ್ವ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುಧೇ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣವಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕಿ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದಗೋಪ ಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಭೋಜಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಡೇ a wife asked her husband uh, she was asking the husband he asked the husband that when you are driving you and when you are taking turns left turn or right turn you when you are taking turns you do it so fast hmm mereko to dar lagta hai you feel scared hmm to husband ne bola dekh ke wife ko are itna aise hai then you do what i do so uh why say what do you do i just close my eyes <laughs> <laughs> so you also close your eyes <laughs> so like that today society is going at a very high speed hmm? uh and then but we don't know where we are going and we just closed our eyes and going at a high speed hmm? so that's why it's important for us some time in a week to take a break from our high speeding and then think about krishna think about ourselves think about questions like what is the purpose of my life what am i doing here mm. so and then who created me who is krishna mm. who is supreme lord so and then bhagavad gita is the best book bhagavad gita is like the manual for our life so just like when we buy any computer or any video game or anything you get a manual booklet so when you read that booklet you know then how to operate the system similarly to operate our life we need a manual called bhagavad gita acha mere ko tell me how many of you have attended chapter 1 me aap the you are there you are there mata ji aap bhi the ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ <laughs> so one and two chapter summaries so from now on what i thought we will do a summary first and then do the chapter so quickly chapter one summary is rutarashtra uh, vacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yuyutsava mamaka pandava chaiva kim akurvata sanjaya so this is the first question hmm? this is the first question asked by dhritarashtra hmm, to sanjaya what did say after my sons and sons of pandavas have assembled in dharmakshetra what did they do hmm? so normally what do people do when you when you go to a cricket ground you play cricket or watch cricket when you go to a movie theater you watch movie so when you go to a 
war field, you fight. But then the Dhritarashtra asked this question because he had some intentions, not good intentions. He was thinking that this place, Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra, is a very pious place. So because of this piety of place, he doesn't want to make, he want to make sure that his sons, they won't become pious and they won't change their mood and they would they won't say, Acha, after all we are brothers. Chilo bayo lelo, aada aap lelo, aada hum le lenge. So hopefully they don't say that. Hmm? So Dhritarashtra was thinking all these things, you know. He is the problem, otherwise you know. <laughs> so, he was thinking, so he asked Sanjaya this question. So, how Sanjaya is able to answer? Sanjaya is able to answer because Dhritarashtra requested Vyasadev that, my dear Vyasadev, I am a blind person by birth, I am blind. Hmm? And all my sons and sons of Pandava, they are all fighting in the battlefield. So, I am sitting here in the uh, palace, I don't know what is happening. So, how do I get the news? of what is happening. Then Vyasadeva gave this power of Dhura Drishti to Sanjaya. Sanjaya is the chariot driver of Dhritarashtra. So what is happening? Sanjaya is actually watching like a TV, everything, hmm, 70 mm or now I think IMAX or whatever. He is able to see everything clearly and then he is going to explain to uh, Dhritarashtra. Hmm. So that was the question he asked and also in this question you can see you can get so many points. So already in the first question itself he is making a differentiation. He is making that my sons and sons of Pandu, Pandavas. So he is already making a difference. He is not thinking that they have, they have been fatherless from very young age. They have come to live and I was the one who is looking after them. So they are as good as my sons. He is not thinking. He is thinking sons of Pandu and my sons. So that is, so that is the problem. So that was the first question asked. And then Sanjaya starts explaining. He says that Duryodhana, so he says both the armies have assembled and Duryodhana goes to Dronacharya. Goes to Dronacharya who is the guru. And he is telling to Dronacharya, he is explaining about the army formations. Amara Taraf Itna Lauga, Pandava Gadara Itna Lauga, there are so many. We have 12 Akshohini, Pandavas have 3 or 4 Akshohini, and we have people like Kashi, Raja, and all those things. They have people like Dushta Dimya and all that. And by the way, Dushta Dimya is the one whom you gave training, and he's been blessed to actually kill you. It was your fault why you gave him training. You know, everything, political and all this. You know that story, no? Dhrishtadumya is destined to kill Dronacharya. That's how he takes birth. So, indirectly he says that one also. And finally he says everyone should support Bhishma, Pita, Maha. Uh, all that he says. So, that is all going on. And then uh, Arjuna says, uh, and then everyone starts blowing their conscience. Bhishma doesn't, he, he listens to what Duryodhana is telling, but he doesn't make any comments. He doesn't want to comment because he is already <coughs> upset with Duryodhana. He knows he is a useless fellow. But then because he has taken that vow, hmm, he has taken that uh, Diksha, uh, Oath, what is the Oath? Shapat. Shapat, ne, yeah, Shapat liya hai. Because he has taken that uh, Shapat that he is going to protect the uh, kingdom of Hastinapura, uh, he is actually supporting them. Hmm. Like that, some obligations he has got. Uh, so, without saying anything, Bhishma blows his conch. And then here in the conch, uh, Duryodhana becomes happy. Oh, okay. Uh, grandfather is still fired up. Uh, he is ready to fight. Mm, like that he thinks. And then all the Krishna, Arjuna and Pandavas, they also blow their conch. Panchajanyam rushikesham devadattam danunjaya. So, everyone has one conch. And each conch has a name as well. Hmm? Krishna's uh, conch name is Panchajanyam. Hmm? Panchajanyam Rushikesham Devadattam Dhananjaya. So like that, every conch has name. So this is Vedic you know, is philosophy. 
is not impersonal. It is actually personal. Hmm? It is so much personal that even for non-living things, we are giving a name. Hmm? So, even for a non-living thing, they, they are named. Just like we see people here, uh, you know, in the cars, in the, behind the cars, they have name plates. Yeah, and some of the name plates, Jart. Sing. <laughs> yeah, <no>? Sing. Sing. <laughs> uh, something like that, you know, because they want personal. You know? So, it's not uh, impersonal. You know? So, they all blow their cons. And the moment they blow their cons, just by hearing that sound, all the Kaurava soldiers and their commanders, they got, their hearts are pounding with fear. Hmm? And then, so, so, and then Arjuna says, My dear Krishna, please take my chariot in the middle of the both armies. I want to see. Hmm? I want to take a view, close view of who is there. So Krishna says, all right, he takes the chariot in the middle. So the war has not begun yet. Everyone is making preparations. So he takes, only one chariot is going, he takes in the middle and close so that he can look. So Arjuna is now looking everywhere. And then he can see all his cousins, relatives, friends, Bhishma Pitama, grandfather, his gurus, everyone. And seeing all these, Arjuna becomes bewildered. He gets into illusion, moha. Now people might question, Arjuna is actually associate of Krishna. He is a close friend of Krishna. So how does he get affected by illusion? The reason he got affected by illusion, moha, is because then Bhagavad Gita can be spoken. Otherwise, if Arjuna ko kuch bhi doubt naya, he didn't ask any questions. Krishna said, shoot, and Arjuna went on shooting. Purukshetra is finished, we will not have Bhagavad Gita today. So, whatever Krishna does, there is a purpose behind everything. Hmm. We don't, we may not know it. Kabhi kabhi sochte, Bhagavan aisa kyu karte, kyu, kyu kya hai? After a while you will understand why, why he did it like that. Hmm. Same thing, you know, like when we are small, we used to look at some other things our father or mother used to do and we would wonder, aray kyu kya aisa hai? No, why did he do like this? But after a couple of years or once we grow up, then we realize, Aray, Papa ne is liye kiya hai wo. Oh. No. So, so that time when we are young, we don't think, we think, Papa ko paagal hai, unko kuch pata nahi. But once we grow, once we become, become mature, then we realize, Aray, the re, that day, Papa, why he said like that? No. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So similarly, Krishna also does things which, Sometimes doesn't make sense. Why is he doing Krishna after all? No. There was a devotee who I asked to do chanting and she said, I started chanting, I've done four rounds and then my hand started paining and then I stopped. So sometimes Krishna gives some simple tests like that also. No. To accept anybody, there will be some tests. Life may. In fact, Krishna is giving, giving us tests every moment. But sometimes, kabhi kabhi, he will give simple tests. No. So, my hand is paining, I will not chant. So, see, one time I used to read a lot of books on computer at work. I was reading so much, and they are all PDFs, because in a PDFs only they look like uh, proper, as if you are doing, reading a functional requirement document or business requirement document. As a good <laughs> rather, no? So, I would make all of them into PDFs and I would read them. Canto 1, Canto 2, Canto 3, Canto 4, Canto 5, Canto 6. So, like, there are like thousands of pages. And then I would use mouse. So, click, 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 click. And then after three, four months, my fingers really got painful. I was worried. And I even went and uh, complained to Occupational Health and Safety. They came and they took us, you know. They, and then they advised, okay, use your left hand. And then I realized, yeah, of course, I can use left hand. So I was using left hand again, reading. And then after a while, the pain was gone. And then I realized, oh, okay, I was getting the pain because I was reading, uh, using too much mouse. But then it just went, I kept doing with left hand, the pain is gone. The uh, other day I was, uh, you know, this, uh, <coughs> There is one Babaji in Vrindavan. 
called uh, Rameshwar, Ramesh Baba. So Ramesh Baba is now 86 years old. So two, three weeks ago he was very sick. He had chest infection, throat and all that. He was not able to speak. Kuch bhi baat nahi ar- kuch, nothing is coming out from his mouth. Um, and the doctor said, you cannot speak for the rest of your life. Ho gaya tumara. And then uh, Ramesh Baba came and unko mic diya. they gave him mic and Ramesh Baba is actually a very good singer. He knows all the, uh, he learnt music, Hindustani and he knows all the ragas, swaras, everything. So he thought, the doctor ne to bola mera ko, ki mera ghala nahi aega. But uh, I am not doing it, it's Radharani who is doing. So let me see what she does. Bolke started doing Kirtan. And he was, he started singing. And then it was such a wonderful Kirtan and he said that, Radharani would have looked at me and thought, Haan ki Besharan admi hai, no sunta hai nahi. Bolke, she gave my voice back. Hmm? So like that, sometimes Krishna gives stress and we shouldn't say that, Are, nahi, I can't do it. Hmm? Because uh, even in business terms, they say, unless you are in your comfort zone, nothing happens. You have to go out of your comfort zone. Hmm? So similarly, Krishna consciousness is not just being in the comfort zone, going out of the comfort zone. So, Arjuna looks at all his relatives and he says, he declares, he says, uh, his, his voice was choked up, he's getting sweating, his eyes, eyes are tearful, started crying, and he said, my dear Krishna, all these friends, relatives, cousins, I don't want to kill them. Why should I kill them? He said, what is the point? Even if I win the kingdom, if I don't have their company, then what is the point? I won't enjoy it anyway. Hmm. Just like, you know, there's a famous joke, we say sometimes, there was one person who was drinking Daru Pirata, and then like, uh, uh, some saintly person came and said, Beta Daru Naipina, Narakko Jaya you go to hell. And then he said, but what about Mera Mamu, Mamu bhi pita hai Daru, wo bhi hai Narakko Jaya Ga, Phir Bota Mera Ghar Ke Baju Wale, wo bhi pita, wo bhi Jaya Ga, Aap Mera Bhaiya, wo bhi pita, wo bhi Jaya Ga. अरे सब लोग नरक को जाएंगे तो जो ठीक है सब लोग उधर पी के बैठ के पीएंगे सो लाइक दैट आई मीन ही इज सो मच इनटू दिस कंपनी दैट अर्जुन इज थिंकिंग विदाउट माय कजिन्स एंड एवरीवन व्हाट इज द पॉइंट यू नो सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजंस ही गिव्स इन द सेकंड रीजन ही गिव्स इज दैट इफ आई किल द हस्बैंड्स देन द वाइफ्स ऑफ हस्बैंड्स द वाइफ्स बिकम विडोस एंड देन देयर विल बी Varna Sankara in the society and society gets disturbed and all that, he gives one of the, those reasons. And then also, of course, he says, how can I kill my cousins and... And of course, so that's how chapter one finishes. He says, I don't want to fight. Now this is a shocking news. Are it not good shona? And then uh, you say, no, just like, you know, somebody is going for opening batsman and then he goes, sees the opening bowler, fast bowler, somebody, he says, I don't want to bat. So, so, second chapter, Arjuna continues his problems. He says that I don't want to fight and all. And then finally says, what does he say? Um, what is that verse? Karpanya dosho pahata svabhava prachami tvam dharma sammoda cheta me shishyasteham shadimam tvam prapannam. He says, my dear Krishna, I am now totally confused. I don't know what is right, what is wrong. Whatever I do, it looks like it's going to be uh, doomed, failure. What to do? Just like last class we were talking, we are going, when you are going in a straight road, driving, no problem. Just keep going, keep going, autopilot or whatever. But then when there is an intersection, left, right or something, then you have to think, where do you left or right? Hmm. Similarly, Arjuna, he came to intersection and then for him, it's looking that whether if he goes to left or right, still it's a problem for him. Then what do They stop the car. <laughs> like if you don't know, right, then you stop the car and say, what should I do? Hmm. Similarly, Arjuna said, I can't fight, I am surrendering to you. Hmm? You tell me, Krishna, what should I do? 
And then Krishna smiles at him and tells, Ashoshayanan vashoshansha pragyavadam sabhashase gata sunna gata sunsha nanu so chanti pandita. He says, you are talking like a learned man, pandita. You are talking like a pandita. But then what you are talking is nonsense. Hmm? People who are wise does not lament for the material bodies and material things. And he says, and then from there Krishna starts his instructions on Atma Tattva, knowledge of the soul. You know, he gives all these verses, Natvevaham jatu nasham natvam neme janadipa nachaiva nabavishyamaha sarvevaya mataha para Never was a time when I did not exist, when there was a time when you did not exist. Everyone is existing, he says. Only difference is different bodies. We are existing in different bodies. Hmm. So, Krishna says, and then Krishna also gives so much information about uh, the soul. Hmm. This information, Chinna jayate mriyate va kadachit nayam bhutva bhavita va nabhuya ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire. Krishna is talking about soul. He says, for soul there is no birth, no death, no old age, nothing. It never comes into being, it never came into being and never. So, then whatever we see, it's happening only due to our, happening to our physical body. Hmm? That's what is happening. So, um, sometimes people, we also discuss this one. All of us, we have two roles. Anyone remember what are the roles we have? Probably two, two roles, mainly. There are so many roles. We can be father, we can be mother, we can be doctor, we can be engineer. These are all the roles. So these are all the roles basing on the situation. Hmm. So somebody is working as a doctor hmm. and he retired. So he is no longer a doctor. Hmm. So, and then somebody is a uh, CEO of a company, he retires. So he is no longer a CEO, he is a normal Mr. Ram or you know, something. So these are all temporary designations. So these are called as functional identities. Functional identities means the work that we do, identities are based on these functions that we do. So these functional identities can change in a lifetime. For example, somebody can be a Hindu for some time, then he might think, Are nane achan, I want to become a Muslim, so he might change into a Muslim. Then he might think, Are no, no, actually, uh, I want to become uh, okay, uh, Christian, so he becomes a Christian. So these roles are changing, he is changing faiths, hmm? but there is something that is not changing, that is eternally present, hmm? that is the nature, hmm? that is called the original identity, functional identity and original identity. Functional identity, they keep changing. Original identity, it remains. Mm. So, um, and then people get, uh, so just like Arjuna, people get disturbed. Mm. People get disturbed. Uh, actually, there is one interesting, uh, interesting incident. There was one person, um, he was is a scuba diver. So he was doing the scuba diving uh, in Sri Lanka, you know, scuba diving underwater, under sea. And then suddenly, suddenly he felt he was rising. Normally when scuba divers go down, they just go down, you know, there is a technique by which they... But he felt he was rising. Then after a while, it stopped. And he thought, oh, this is very strange, what happened? My see, would get... And then he thought, okay, something funny. And then he went down again. He did his scuba diving, whatever, you know, photos or whatever. And then he came, he came up and he went to the beach, coastline. And then he saw there is no coastline at all. Everything is gone. So that was the day when tsunami actually struck, you know, Sri Lanka, the Chennai. And so that day, the diver was actually in the ocean. And nothing happened to him, but whatever is outside, everything got destroyed. Similarly, it is said that we have to dive deep into bhakti. 
so that we don't get disturbed or influenced by small things petty things that come around and go come and go aaj garmi zyada hai aaj garmi kal thand zyada hoga you know then it will be barish hoga it will be raining that's okay as long as you no know, as long as we are not directly in sun see prabhu ji has put some nice fans and aircon and everything so don't need to worry hmm. so like that you just tolerate and krishna also says in bhagavad gita the same thing मात्रा स्पर्शस्तु कौंते शीतोष्ण सुख दुखद अगमापायनो निस्तातिक्ष स्वभारत सेस टॉलरेट ही गिव्स एडवाइस टू अर्जुन टॉलरेट दिस यू हैव टू टॉलरेट दिस डिस्ट्रेस दट यू फील डिस्ट्रेस दट यू गेट बै किलिंग युअर रिलेटिव एंड यू एक्ट ऑन द प्लैटफॉर्म ऑफ soul not on the platform of a kshatriya not on the platform of a kuru nandana if it is a kuru nandana means if he thinks he is a son of a kuru dynasty then he will not fight and if it is if he thinks it's a it's a kshatriya he will fight but then he will fight with wrath means anger and everything but if he thinks he is a soul the platform of soul and is fighting because of a dharma yuddha dharma kshetra and he's fighting on the order of krishna because we, you remember all the atrocities kauravas has done for pandavas so nobody would tolerate those things actually it's interesting duryodhana is a number one demon the he is actually is a demonic personality and is a demon there was one time when uh, kauravas including karna were defeated by some uh, what are they prabhu uh, defeated by um, gandharvas they were defeated by gandharvas and uh, yudhishthir says okay it's a insult to our dynasty he says arjuna you go and fight with them and you get them released so uh bima it goes bima arjuna goes and then they have a short fight not even much fight because as soon as they saw they said okay leke jao bhai and but then duryodhana got so much upset he got unka he was thinking that mera what do you call mera izzat chalega no i lost all my kya bolte hain hindi mein apman gor apman hua mera ko and then duryodhana says i am going to i'm not going to go back to astinapur i'm going to fast and die here only hmm. because duryodhan was very egoistic he was so egoistic that he would not do not even put a umbrella on his head because he thinks nothing should be on my head utna pagal hai wo so he was fasting he said i'm going to fast till death wo soch ke baitha hai wo then there was Duryodhan was abducted by aliens. Aliens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Duryodhan was abducted by aliens. He was taken to a different world, where he was explained his mission and uh, vision. He said, "My dear Duryodhan, you are our hope. Hmm? You are our hope for our demons, demoniac families. Hmm? Not only you. So many kings have taken birth in the family of uh, Kshatriyas." they are all nothing none other than the demons hmm? we all want to come into the power and then you know enjoy life in our way and destroy the world that's why krishna brought all these demoniac kings in one place in kurukshetra and then he finished them all he got them finished through arjuna hmm? so all these all these kshatriyas they were nothing but demons so these demons they abducted duryodhana took him to a different dimension took him to a different place and explained him oh my dear you are our uh, greatest hope if you die then all our hopes go no 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 you go back you continue doing all the nonsense you are doing and don't worry we are behind you we are going to help you and we'll join you please go and that's how duryodhan came back he stopped his fast and then he went back you don't know this <laughs> alien abduction in mahabharat is there <laughs> there so that is duryodhan 
So, Krishna explains that what are you talking about uh, Kula Dharma and all this? All your relatives, Bhishma, Pitama, Dronacharya, Kupacharya, they are all aged anyway. And they have been taking, uh, they, are, they are living on, uh, no, what do you call, what do you call, on Kaurava's, uh, what do you call? Sympathy. Uh, sympathy, no, like, uh, no. Fiction. Mostly. Yeah. The Kauravas are maintaining them. So they are taking remuneration from Kauravas. So they have already accumulated a lot of pop, sin. Now if you kill them in the battlefield now, they will get absorbed of the sins and they will actually go to Veeraswarga. But if you don't kill them and if they continue doing all that uh, with Kauravas, they get more papa. So you are looking at only one life, this life. I am looking at so many future lives for them. Mm. So my vision is much, much farther. That's one reason Krishna says. And second reason Krishna says you are talking about all the husbands being killed. But when everyone is alive, Duryodhan was about to uh, rape your wife in front of everyone. Mm. So he's such a bad character. Duryodhan, Karna and Dushyasan. So, if you don't kill them, then even the husbands out there, there will be so much irreligion prevalent in the society. Hmm? And then if actually as the husbands are dead and they become widow, Yudhishthir is so, such a pious person, he will treat everyone like his mother. He will take care of everyone nicely and there will be shanti in the society. So, so Krishna gives all this and then he explains about this Atma Tattva, the soul cannot be cut into pieces, the soul cannot be destroyed, cannot be burned by any uh, fire, cannot be moistened by water, uh, no weapon can hurt it and he explains soul is like what tip of the hair, one, ten, one by ten thousandth tip of the hair. Now, um, so there is a question, people who are scientifically oriented things, so oh, is it science? scientifically proven. But when we look at it, what does science prove? Science actually can measure, science can only measure what is material. It can only see whatever it can see, measure, verify, that's what science does. But science cannot actually find out what is the subtle or even the soul. Just like if you are using a microscope, you can look at small microscopic particles or uh, bacteria like that. But you can't use a microscope to look at the stars or moon or sun. It simply doesn't work. Similarly, science is a wonderful tool, way to actually measure, estimate, experiment, whatever physical and material. But science can't do anything with the spiritual and subtle. And then there's, we have also spoken about past life incarnations, reincarnations and all these things we have spoken, which proves that actually there is life after death. We have all spo spoken small children talking in different languages. Actually there was one person who was, uh, he who wrote some language which was like 2000 years old. There's only three or four people on the earth who know that language. There is a big study going on in the US on this now. Because there was a one uh, doctor, Ian Stevenson, he started this study of uh, reincarnation because he used to get some patients who would have the, you know, disturbance. You know, he, they think uh, they, are, they are small children, but they talk about past lives. So Ian Stevenson did a lot of studies and then uh, that's also, it is proven. And also we saw that, what is that, um, engineer, builder of Titanic ship, mm. he has been reincarnated and he gave a reason why the Titanic sank. Mm. So Krishna explains Arjuna about all this and then finally what does Krishna say? He says that you fight, you fight and then if you win, you go to, uh, you enjoy your kingdom. If you lose, you go to Swarga, hmm. Vira Swarga. Either way, you are at a game. But if you don't fight, then you get infamy. People will ridicule you, people will laugh at you. And then, and also one more thing is, 
So if you say that I don't want to fight, it's, there's no guarantee that the Kauravas doesn't want to fight. You say you don't want to fight and you're going away, Kauravas might come back and kill you. Then you can't do anything, you and your brothers. So all these things he explains. Hmm. So, um, so Krishna explains about um, Atma Tattva, the nature of the soul. Then he explains about uh, Karma Yoga. And this is the Sakama Karma. Sakama Karma means you're expecting some results. So that means you fight. And then if you win, you enjoy the kingdom. If you lose, you go to... So you are expecting something. Then Krishna also explains about Nishkama Karma Yoga. Nishkama Karma Yoga means Krishna says, Karmanye Vadikaraste Mapaleshu Kadachana Ma Karma He Turbo Swango Mate Swango Svakarmane He says, you have the right to perform your duty. Hmm? But you don't have any right to expect the results. Results are not in your hands. You don't go with the expectation results. So people might think, like the manager or boss of a company might think, you don't expect any salary and you just go, no, I get a lot of profit. So it's not actually like that. What it says is that working without results means it's not just working for only the money or the results. It's working for something that is beyond the results. For every action that we do in life, you get so many reactions. But simple terms, you get two reactions. One is external reaction, one is internal reaction. External reaction is you get some result. Some result, bad or good or something. That is external reaction. But internal reaction also you get depending on what type of work you did. Whether it's a good work, bad work, you get that internal reaction. Hmm. So if you do something good, then that will actually elevate your consciousness, elevate your you know, punya and you go higher up. You know. So Krishna explains that, you know, so this is from Sakama Karma Yoga, Krishna is coming to Nishkama Karma Yoga. Krishna says, do not expect any results, you work because you fight, because I am telling you to fight. Nimitta Matram Bhava Sagya Sachi, you just become an instrument. He says, I have already killed all these various that you are seeing. Hmm? You just kill them and you get your credit. Because Krishna is Supreme Lord anyway. He doesn't need to do all these things at all. In one split second he can finish everything. Why all this drama? But then he wants to give credit to his devotees. Different, different devotees he wants to give credit. And sometimes he wants to give credit to Hanuman, sometimes to the, uh, Bhima, sometimes to Arjuna. Because uh, so that's the nature of the Lord. So it's a Nivitta Matram Bhavasari Sarchi. So he says, from Sakama Karma Yoga, Nishkama Karma Yoga, Krishna explains. Mm -hmm. And then he says, Krishna says, act with Buddhi Yoga. Use your intelligence. Mm -hmm. Act on the platform of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then Krishna explains so many things, how to use our intelligence. Uh, what is that uh, famous verse, Prabhu? Uh, Fall down. Uh, what is that? Um, eight stages of fall down. Tolerate. Um, uh, soul never dies. Uh, Sakama karma. Do prescribe duty. Avoiding fight. Equanimity. Nishkama karma yoga. Buddhi yoga. Okay. So this buddhi yoga, Krishna explains that. So, Buddha Yoga is, Krishna says, so far I have given an analytical description of the body, soul, Sankhya Yoga or Jnana Yoga. Son of Ruta, now hear about Buddha Yoga. When you engage Yukta, your intelligence in this Yoga, you will become free from bondage of work, Karma Bandhana. Hmm? So, and then Krishna explains, Neha Vikramana Shosti Patya Vayo Navidyate Svalpa Mafiasa Dharmasya Trayate Mahato Payat. By performing Buddha Yoga, there is no loss or diminution, destruction. Hmm? And even little advancement on this path can protect one from most dangerous types of fear. Now hearing all this, Arjuna becomes interested. My dear Krishna, who is this person? Hmm? Who is this person? What is uh, the nature of this person? What, how does he... Uh, how does a Buddha Yogi look like? What does he do? There is a nice verse.
I should have brought my laptop on. Oh, so these are the famous verses, you know. Jayato Vishayam Pumcha Sangaste Supajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kamak Kamak Prodo Vijayate. This is while contemplating on the objects of a senses, a person develops attachment for them, and from such attachment, lust develops, and from lust, anger rises. So, these are the different stages. So, Krishna is telling, use your intelligence. And then he is explaining how to use your intelligence to actually get away from this. So firstly, how one gets attached, you know, implicated in something. He says, first he says, contemplating. You see some poster or some uh, advertisement or something and then you start thinking about it. Jayata vishayam pumsam tangaste supajayate. Especially on something material. And then once you are thinking about it, you develop attachment. I need that, I need that. And then once it happens, then you get the attraction for it. And then from attraction, you get lust. Lust means, that's the big banaya. Somehow or other, I should get it. That's all that. And then, kabi kabi milta hai, kabi kabi nahi milta hai. Then you become angry. From lust, anger comes. And then the next word Krishna says, Prodat Bhavati Sammoha Sammoha Smuti Vibra Maha Smuti Vibra Smuti Bramsha Buddhinasha Buddhinasha Pranashyati He says from anger complete delusion arises and from delusion the bewilderment of memory and when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost and so you know you have seen there was uh, MLA some MLA's uh, son he was driving in a car thank you thank you for that. he was driving in a car somebody has overtaken him india mein someone has overtaken his car someone overtook his car itne se usko gussa ho gaya and then he took a gun and shot that person hmm? so when your intelligence is lost, then you lose your mind. Like that. So, hearing all this, Krishna actually, uh, Arjuna asked Krishna that one question. What, uh, what does he ask? People are so foolish, that's why, you know, Krishna exactly saying here, when you lose bewilderment of memory, then you, you don't think what you are doing, you think you are intelligent. As a body, you are dark, 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 you are so that is why buddhi, mind, intelligence is gone. Hmm. Krishna says, Prodat bhavati sammohas prammohas smuti vibramaha smuti bramshat buddhi nasho buddhi nasho pranashyati. So once your intelligence is gone, then you do all as it comes to you. This is how it is. So and then Arjuna asks Krishna that who is this person who is, who can, um, what is, um, who can control his senses like this. Hmm? So, and then Krishna explains that uh, about this buddhi yogi who can actually, uh, sita prajna, who can control his senses and he explains, he gives analogies of a tortoise. He says, just like a tortoise, when tortoise sees anything uh, danger or anything, it will actually fold its hands and legs inside. Similarly, when an intelligent person seems sees anything, uh, disturbing or uh, attachment as a then you should restrain your senses like a tortoise 
and also Krishna says, gives an another example of ocean. Just like an ocean, ocean, so many rivers, water flow, everything comes into ocean, but ocean level is remains same and calm. It's not affected. Similarly, but our colony me chota sa gali hai. Usme ek there is a puddle. Usme if there is a rain and floods, it will overflow. Pura bad jata hai. Similarly, our consciousness should be like that of an ocean, so that whatever things come in, we should not get disturbed. We should stay calm like an ocean. But if our consciousness is like a puddle, small puddle. Then small thing happens, chota sa rain aya, you get disturbed. So, so, and that's how Krishna says, this kind of person can actually achieve liberation after death, he says. So we'll stop here. Any questions, comments? Janavi? Questions, comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The question is whenever we plan picnic, Sukhya Dev is very merciful. He's merciful that he will shine and a fool gives a brightness to us. We stay where we are. So next time, Mata Ji plan Easter break nothing. Once Sunday, I'll tell you. We should plan Easter break before and uh, no. next, like, so next time don't plan one week before. One week before. Plan ahead, much ahead. Yeah, yeah. So like a Friday, no. we are get every time we meet you on Friday. No. You will know the weather, the weather on next Saturday or Sunday. So plan during that time. Don't oh, plan two, three weeks before. Too much before. Yes. Uh, we, so we one week before at least before Everyone can have lunch ahead. I know, I know. But we can give tentative days. Before they say we already planned. Yeah. <laughs> so we can give the tentative days. If the two weeks after this Sunday or Saturday weather is good, we will do. Wow. So yeah. now it is informed. Prabhu said we will do. <laughs> when the uh, this uh, Easter holiday comes, no? Don't plan anything until we tell something. <laughs> so that we will do.